So, it's the middle of Australian summer and my aircon decided that now would be an appropriate time to break. So we have exactly five minutes before I start sweating like a pregnant nun. So I'm gonna talk fast and you're gonna listen fast. So you might've heard that offering a free trial is a really good way to get clients, especially if you are just starting out, sending out some free samples of emails, rewriting someone's leads, giving them a few Instagram posts they could use. And guess what? I totally agree. That is absolutely one of the best ways you can go about landing clients. It's something that I've been recommending to my clients for years. It's worked very well for them. And I know big name A-list copywriters like Justin Goff, Stefan Georgie, etc., recommend pretty much the same method. And they have hired a ton of copywriters who have done exactly that for them. Um, but Sean, the title of this video is literally why you should never offer a free trial as a freelance copywriter. This is clickbait, dislike, unsub, I'm calling the cops and I'm telling your mom. So the mistake that most freelancers make when offering a free trial is number one, their positioning is terrible. So they come off like a desperate pauper begging for work. And number two, there is no value exchange. Okay, just because you're offering something for free does not mean there is no value exchange happening. It might be free financially, it doesn't cost them any money, but there has to be some sort of exchange there. And I'm gonna give you five very solid reasons exactly why you should never offer something completely for free, why there should always be an exchange. But first, a little story which I think proves my point perfectly. So I have two good friends and mentors by the names of Taki Moore. He's a rockstar business coach that coaches business coaches does about 15 to 20 million dollars a year and never wears shoes. Really, really amazing human being. And the other guy, his name is Grant Lewis. He was actually Taki's boss at the time. And fun fact, he used to be Showtech's ex tour manager. If you the dance music, you would know that. Showtech, obviously two of the biggest, most famous DJ duo of all time. But in a past life, before Grant was flying around in private jets with famous DJs and models, he used to run a restaurant marketing agency. Now one day, him and Taki were tasked with launching a new pizzeria in the heart of the Sydney CBD. So naturally, they're going around and they're trying to get customers, they're trying to get attention to their restaurant, so they hit the streets and they started handing out flyers. Now, the flyer was for a free slice of pizza, so they were literally walking around the streets going, free pizza, free pizza, who wants a free pizza? Crickets. Literally nothing, like no one would take their flyer and they were bamboozled. They could not figure out why. They were like, who the hell in their right mind doesn't want free pizza? Pizza's amazing, it's piping hot, delicious, fresh pizza. Who wouldn't want that? So they had a bit of a, a brainstorm session, a halftime huddle. They were like, hey, we need to reevaluate our approach. This clearly isn't working very well. What can we do instead? And they remembered, oh, that's right. No one values free shit. So they changed their offer. Instead of saying free pizza, they started chanting, do us a favor, get a free slice of pizza. Do us a favor, get a free slice of pizza. And the results were literally night and day. By comparison, they couldn't get anyone to take the flyers before. And literally within minutes after changing it to an exchange, there was a line out the door and boom, the rest is history. The pizzeria was very successful and it was a hugely successful launch day. And all the favor was, by the way, is the person just had to give them a review on Google or social media. And if you're wondering why the offer for an exchange of a service was converted so much higher than just offering to give away free pizza, here are the five reasons why you should always offer your service in exchange for something and never just give anything away completely for free. Number one is because the second you say the word free, people's guards go up, okay? They assume you have some sort of ulterior motive and they don't trust you. Why? Because they've been burnt before and let's face it, nothing in this life is truly free, okay? Apart from oxygen and coriander because no one wants that shit. In fact, you actually could not pay me any amount of money to eat coriander, even if it was the actual last edible thing on earth. Nope. So in the pizza example, people assumed when they're giving away free pizza that, uh, maybe the pizza must not be very good, they can't sell it, maybe it's off. People make up all sorts of reasons and rationalizations why it must not be very good, and so they don't take it. And I've actually seen this firsthand in my town as well, someone giving away free $20 voucher to Uber Eats on the street, and no one would take it because it was free. Similar thing going on here. But as soon as they reveal their motives and they say, hey, we're doing this because we want a review for our brand new pizza store so we can, you know, grow our business, everyone goes, oh, cool, I get it, makes sense. I trust you guys now because I know why you're giving away the pizza for free. <laughs> yeah, boy. Cool, so now you've revealed your motive, but people are still rejecting and ignoring you. Why? Very simple, and it's number two, the law of reciprocity. When someone does a favor for you, if you're a person of normal morals and ethics, then you will feel some sort of feeling of indebtedness towards them. 
And people don't like feeling indebted towards other people. People hate feeling like they owe other people a favor. And so it's much, much easier just to straight up reject you and say no, rather than actually take you on and consider your offer. Because if you're like, oh, this person wrote free emails for me and I feel kind of guilty, you know, maybe I want to pay them something or I feel like I should owe, I owe them something in some way. And it's much, much easier to avoid that whole situation by simply just ignoring your email. Nope. Number three, very simple, it's positioning. If you're giving your shit away for free, then people will conclude that, hmm, you must not be very good at what you do. Because if you were good, then you would have a bunch of clients and you wouldn't need to be emailing them and asking to give them samples for free. So they're less likely to even give you the time of day to bother checking out your emails because they assume that the email is just not gonna be very good. And even if they do accept it, it's gonna be way, way harder to close them at a high price with that kind of really poor positioning from the start. And the number four reason, which in my opinion is the most interesting, is that straight up, as we know, people don't value free. Which means even if they do say yes and they receive your sample emails, they will literally perceive the copy you wrote as being lower quality than email samples that they actually would have paid for, even if it's exactly the same copy. Remember, people value what they pay for. In a 2008 study conducted by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, literally penis for short, P-N-A-S, definitely could have chosen a better name. They did a very interesting experiment where they hooked participants' brains up to an MRI scanner of their brain, and they gave them three different glasses of wine. So one of the bottles of wine was a super shitty, cheap $5 bottle of wine. They also had a mid-range $35 bottle of wine, and then they had an expensive $90 bottle of wine. Now here's the interesting part, is that they lied to all of the participants about which bottle was which. And literally, consistently across the board, the data proves that the bottle which the participants were told was the most expensive. Okay, it could have been any of the three bottles, but the one they were told was the most expensive. Not only did the participants rate as tasting better, but the literal pleasure centers in their brain lit up on the MRI scanner more when they drank the one that they was perceived to be more expensive. Let that sink in. That shit is fucking crazy. It's very interesting, the psychology of higher pricing. You can literally give your clients a better client experience by doing nothing except raising your prices because when you have higher prices, your clients will literally conclude that your product and service was better than if they had paid less for it, okay? They will rationalize and justify to themselves that the product or service that they received was actually better than maybe it may have been. And likewise, on the flip, if it was free or it's cheap, they will rationalize and justify to themselves that it must not be as good quality. That's pretty mind-blowing shit. That's pretty fucking crazy stuff. And in fact, one of my clients, his name is Luca Menighetti. He's actually our record breaker for fastest zero to 10K month. He did it in exactly 25 days as a 16 year old high school student, still going to high school every day, went from zero to making a consistent six figure income in 25 days, literally insane. But before he joined CMB though, okay, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. This dude, we have an interview on YouTube. You can check it out. Uh, this, Everything I'm saying is 100% true. Um, you can hear it from his mouth directly if you want. He literally could not get clients for free to save his life. I think he DM'd like 100 people and could not convince a single person to work for them for free because of his age, okay? And because of all the things we went over just then. When you offer your services for free, number one, their guard goes up, okay? They feel like you have an ulterior motive and they don't trust you. Number two, they don't wanna feel a sense of reciprocity with the stranger. Number three, it's terrible fucking positioning and it makes you look desperate. Number four, People don't value free, so they will literally perceive your samples as being worse than they actually are. And number five, obviously, is that you are missing out on a testimonial or a referral that you could have got had you just asked, okay? So by asking for a testimonial or a referral or both, not only are you getting valuable you know, testimonials and referrals that you can use to grow your business, but they are more likely to say yes than had you just asked for nothing in exchange, and they will literally perceive your copy that you wrote to be better then if you were just giving it to them for free, I wanted nothing in return. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. It is literally advantageous in every single way possible to ask for something in return than it is to just give people samples for free. And remember to always, always ask your clients to test the copy that you wrote for them. Okay, never just give them copy and be like, here's some samples, see you later. Crickets, okay? The number one primary reason you are sending people free samples in the first place is to demonstrate your writing ability. Okay, rather than talking about how good you are, you're actually showing them firsthand how good you are. But you have to make this a condition of sending them samples. You have to ask that they test the copy that you wrote. Okay, so they actually have to send out 
the emails that you wrote or test your lead versus the current lead that they have for their sales page. And if yours wins, it's literally game over. You have yourself a client just like that without needing to do anything else. Okay, it's literally that simple. So remember this video the next time you're offering samples for free, okay? Always ask for something in exchange, a testimonial or a referral, and always make sure they test your copy against what they're currently sending out and report back on the results and you guys can go from there. And in exchange for this valuable free information that I've given you in this video, I ask in return that you like, subscribe, who knows, maybe buy me a cocktail next time you meet me in person when we're celebrating you landing your next high paying client from what you've learned in this video. On that note, I am sweating like a cow in a slaughterhouse right now. So I am going to go eat some Italian food. Hope you have a tremendous rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. In a 2008 study, this is really interesting. Um, in a 2008 study conducted by the proceedings in a 2008 study conducted by the Proceedings of National American Sci Academy of Sciences. I'll get this right one day. In a 2008 study conducted by the National Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. I can do this, I swear. In a 2008 study conducted by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. I had to look that up. In a 2008... <laughs> oh my god. In a 2008 study conducted... <laughs> Oh shit, okay. <laughs>